Hello, welcome back to the Geography 300 Geographical Data Analysis video series for WVU. This is wrapping up the um, different pitfalls or trouble spots that we can encounter when doing spatial analysis. There are general concerns. With this one, I have under the heading non uniformity of space. Now, that might initially not make much sense. But we'll get there. So if we have big study area. And again, I'll keep with the idea of disease cases. Whether it's COVID or something else, you can it, it doesn't make much difference. The general principle applies broadly. we have here, this can be a case of COVID. Now if I'm looking here, I see this looks pretty bad. There's a lot of cases here. There are situations where, okay, we need to make sure this area <coughs> has enough hospital beds. Looking at the cases, like this can sometimes be important. But if I want to try to understand different processes going on, what can increase or decrease risk factors? I might, if I switch over to, to a cancer, something that rather than infectious disease, a chronic disease that can be more environmentally caused, you might say, this is, there's something going on here. There's something in the water. We need to check this out. But I guarantee if you go and you look at any kind of cancer in the U.S., you're probably going to find there are really high numbers of cases in New York City, in Chicago, and Los Angeles. That does not mean those places are especially dangerous. All it means is they have more people. So space there is not uniform. We expect more cases of COVID. We expect more cases of cancer in those places just by virtue of having more people. Our expectations are not uniform, so we should not assume uniformity when applying our spatial analysis. Within public health and in other situations, the main approach to resolving this is standardize your data. Don't use the case count, use the rates. So we need to know not just where are the cases, but where are those which are, which are not cases? Where are the healthy people? So I put the healthy people. That's a city. So there's probably nothing special going on there. So that was a false alarm look if we looked only at the COVID data. On the other hand, I've got myself an area here where, okay, it's rural, but everybody is sick. And so the rate is higher because those few cases are not offset by the normal number of healthy cases from other places. So he, again, that idea that space is not uniform, it can actually cut both ways. It means areas with high unstandardized numbers, once they standardize, it all goes away. Areas that might look normal until you standardize, once you standardize, and apply the, the healthy people, do a rate of, as is often reported, say, um, COVID cases per 100,000 people. And you find that this rural area has a really bad outbreak going on. 
then we need to go and do something about that area. So once we account for those expected variations in space, recognizing space is not uniform, our results can change. And by accounting for that, we can have stronger results and more confidence in what we have. All, in all cases, all of these pitfalls, it does not mean just give up on applying statistics to our spatial data. Yes, it means there are concerns, there are cautions that you're not going to find if you only do non-spatial analysis. You're not going to find this if you look at, say, STAT 111 or STAT 1 or 211. They're not going to talk about these spatial issues. But as we are doing statistical analysis of spatial data, we have to keep that in mind. We have to be concerned about this and acknowledge how this can change our results and interpret our results accordingly. It's about, in a way, it's, a, it's about that interpretation and in some ways about the setup. Using rates here, standardized data, we can actually, in many ways, account for this particular pitfall in our analysis and change our analysis to remove it. So there are ways to solve these. And we'll be looking, especially when we get later into the different methods, into more explicitly spatial methods, we will see how these can, in some ways, avoid a lot of these trouble spots that can arise in the interpretation of our spatial analysis. But until then, as we start just looking at the regular non-spatial stats, just keep these in the back of your head with interpretation. As always, if there are questions, um, feel free to ask me by email through Zoom. And looking ahead, our next topics, start to build up that um, inventory of different techniques that we have available by looking in more depth at the t-test and different varieties of the t-test, as well as something called ANOVA. We will see that next week in the next set of videos. Until then, have, have a good one, and thank you for watching. Bye.